Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I am the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, Proven Strategies for Hybrid Cloud Computing with Mainframes, sponsored today by Click. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen for that feature. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speakers for today, Adam Mayer and Phil DeValon. Phil is an AWS Principal Solutions Architect and Global Technical Lead for Mainframe and Legacy Modernization. Phil has worked with mainframes for about 20 years, primarily focusing on modernization and initiatives for customers worldwide. In his current role, he advises customers and partners on how to best leverage AWS value proposition for mainframe and legacy systems. He contributes to AWS and partner innovations for unleashing the value of legacy assets with AWS. And Adam is responsible for CDC streaming and mainframe product marketing in addition to delivering Click's Internet of Things and GDPR go-to-market strategy. With a strong technical background in computing spanning over 20 years, underpinned by an decisive engineering perspective, Adam is an avid follower of new technology and holds a deep fascination for all things IoT. Particularly on the data streaming and analytics side, he loves finding new ways to make it as translatable, visual, and understandable to as many people as possible. And with that, I will turn it over to Adam to get us started. Adam and Phil, hello and welcome. Excellent, thank you, Shannon. So data is the lifeblood for every company and getting access to clearer, better, faster insights is now more critical than ever. And here's a fun fact, with mainframes managing almost 90% of all credit card transactions online now, just goes to show that mainframes are still very much alive and extremely mission critical for many organizations. But how do you unlock your mainframes data true potential? So my name is Adam Mayer from Click, and I'm gonna talk to you through uh, how you can just do that. So it's about modernizing and automating your data integration. And what do we mean by that? So like it says here, it's really about uh, delivering, uh, effectively capturing large volumes of uh, change data as it changes from a wide range of sources, those heterogeneous sources, and being able to deliver analytics um, uh, analytics ready data in real time to your cloud platform like AWS. And this is where you can then uh, take advantage of it uh, and do things like cataloging it for enabling discovery and then provisioning it out to the rest of the organization, to your analysts and data scientists um, and beyond. So in terms of doing that, it's about um, having the most comprehensive platform that offering, offers capturing change data and delivers that ideally as analytics ready data. So then you can publish that out to your BI and data scientist chosen tools. You want to be looking to partner with best in cloud uh, integration solution providers and cloud providers, and you want to be able to do it as easily as possible with as much automation as possible. And that's about partnership with trusted market leaders. And this is what the Click data integration platform delivers. It's been architected from the ground up for real-time change data capture and analytics ready data delivery. And it's about seamlessly being able to move real-time data between those heterogeneous systems, connecting on-premise systems with cloud environments like AWS, and even moving data between other cloud providers into AWS, all under one roof and one platform. And in fact, we've migrated together, um, uh, we've migrated and integrated more than 200,000 databases and mainframes to the cloud now. Um, and it's a complete and automated solution through initial instantation, through table target um, or target table creation, automated mappings and schema synchronization, and automatically allowing you to create data warehouses in the data marks uh, and data lakes. And being able to catalog those data assets and then publish out to those BI and data sciences tools. 
And this is all delivered through scale uh, and with scale and, and stability. And in fact, it's relied on by more than two and a half thousand customers now, including half of the Fortune 100. And that's backed up by an ever-growing R&D dedicated um, R&D uh, team that can scale up to embrace the ever-changing tech landscape uh, and also driven by customer needs. And it's, we also have a wide team um, in the, the, the sales team and professional services that have deep expertise in data, data integration, and analytics. And in terms of what's actually driving the data integration business, there's these three key trends um, that are driving it. And they're all driven around um, requiring real-time data into um, and from on-premise systems and cloud platforms. So on the left, we have uh, cloud application development. And this is really about taking legacy applications and uh, taking them through modernization programs and initiatives. So you can um, build out um, faster, uh, and easier new application development onto the cloud, uh, particularly taking advantages of microservices um, architectures. So you can then deliver that much higher scalability and elastic type environments that can scale out based on demand and also take advantage of the infrastructure and maintenance cost savings that um, uh, cloud offers. The middle one is around data warehouse modernization, and this is the drive to reduce the costs that are associated with your legacy EDWs and provide the elasticity again by taking advantage of, of cloud environments. So it allows you then to meet new business requirements and support more advanced analytics. So data warehouse automation really is a, an approach to look into replace your traditional ETL with a much more modern self-service capabilities. And then the last one on the right there is this next generation of analytics and data monetization. So it's driven by the need to be, uh, to want to analyze a much broader set uh, of data structures, unstructured and structured data, and really meeting the ever changing and growing needs of the organization. So bringing in things like intuitive search across data, leveraging technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things, um, and, and bringing in decision automation and those kind of things to really start gaining that competitive advantage. And this piece is around um, managing your data lake creation um, to stop it changing into that infamous data swamp um, and looking at your uh, biggest and widest data and be able to process that at scale into more modern platforms, um, and particularly streaming um, uh, systems as well, like Kinesis on uh, AWS. And when we look at um, our enterprise customers that are um, wanting to leverage their mainframe data for better analytics and, and really overall reducing that total cost of ownership. It's these typical common objectives um, that they all have in common. So it's about being able to or wanting to deliver more and better insights to the business in an agile fashion. It's wanting to have the ability to be able to extract the mainframe data to separate platforms, particularly out on the cloud, for those uh, for better analytics initiatives and really looking to reduce that costly MIPS charges at the source of the mainframe. And typically, this is about supporting cloud migrations uh, and better anal analytics initiatives on the cloud. But trying to meet those objectives doesn't come without its challenges. So more often than not, it's a case of you know, not being able to afford to increase that costly MIPS consumption. So lowering the impact off the mainframe um, and delivering that across you know, low latency. So in order to realize the highest possible analytics value, the data has to be copied from those source mainframe systems in near real time. And you want to be able to do that without impacting it. So it's really about platform flexibility uh, because organizations like yourself need to be able to manage and shift those workloads between those multiple legacy systems that you've got and uh, the modern platforms that you're, you're building on and aspire to. Um, and that requires different levels of, of skill set. And it's about being able to deliver that in a timely fashion and demonstrating those quick returns on your investment, particularly down those analytics initiatives and doing it as efficiently as possible um, and looking to reduce 
the all time you know, manual and really time consuming process of uh, that's involved in terms of landing, staging and reconciling your data. And this is where the Click Data Integration Platform can come in. It's about being able to allow you um, uh, to modernize, automate, and really simplify your data integration with analytics-ready data delivery through streaming data pipelines. So on the left-hand side, we have this wide breadth of heterogeneous sources, including the mainframe that we can cater for and allow you to create those automated streaming data pipelines that is basically capturing the changes at source as and when they occur, and then deliver that into your cloud as you need it. Um, and it allows you to really quickly create and deploy analytics-ready structures with automated mapping, automated target table creation and data instantation, wherever you're looking to land it. So whether that's looking to, com to commit that into a CDC streaming use case to you know, any kind of database and messaging systems like Kinesis, um, or whether you're looking to automatically create those data warehouses uh, and data lakes, uh, along with delivering cataloging capabilities that really help to close the last mile in that total visibility of your data landscape. So cataloging allows you to take stock and inventory uh, of all the data that you got, and it allows the rest of the organization to be able to search for and retrieve those you know, pre-prepared data sets to be used outside of the, uh, across the organization at scale. And it can be consumed by a variety of use cases from any analytical tool of your choice to taking advantage of those technologies like AI and, and machine learning that are in much demand now, uh, and of course, the advanced data scientist tools that you, you have at your disposal. So in terms of Click and AWS working better together, just showing you a snapshot here, that wide breadth of heterogeneous sources that we support and allow you to propagate out into the AWS in, uh, environment and the ecosystem and take advantage of the many AWS services that are available um, in real time using best in class CDC technology. And just to point out here, when you look at the, the mainframe sources, this is also about being able to deliver you a solution that, that allows you to not just analyze your mainframe data in isolation, you can bring in all those other data sources as well. So to put it simply, the Click Data Integration uh, platform really allows you to quickly get data into the AWS ecosystem and add value throughout that whole kind of value chain. So you can really use any BI tool of choice for the analytics once you've got the data in, in AWS, but we believe that if you also choose Click for data analytics, we have a data analytics platform as well uh, that's uh, completely um, uh, kind of separate but integrated as well. But if you use that, you can um, not only easily use the data that you've got um, inside the AWS ecosystem, but actually find those actionable insights faster than before. But really for today's talk, the key here is about getting data into AWS as quickly and efficiently as possible, so then you can take advantage of all those AWS services available to you with the data landed already optimized for the targets that you're choosing there. So that's a great segue then to me to hand over to Phil DeValls from AWS, and he can tell you more about how you can get more value out of your mainframe data in AWS. So Phil, over to you. Thank you, Adam. So you can switch to the next slide, actually. I'll start by focusing on the AWS platform itself, and then I'll get into some use cases. So AWS has significantly more services and features than any other cloud provider. We have over 175 services. But we have infrastructure technologies for compute, storage, databases, and we also have technologies for things such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, data lakes, analytics, and Internet of Things. And all those building blocks are readily available at your fingertips to test new ideas quickly. With numerous services, it's actually faster, easier, and more cost-effective to build nearly anything you can imagine. Also, AWS has the deepest functionality within all those services. For example, AWS offers the widest variety of databases that are purpose-built for different types of applications. This way, you can choose the right tool for the job to get the best cost and the best performance. On top of this, 
the AWS marketplace offers thousands of software listings ready to be deployed from ISVs. As an example, Click Replicate is available on the AWS marketplace and can be deployed in minutes. AWS also has the largest and most dynamic community with millions of active customers, tens of thousands of partners globally. We have customers across virtually every industry and of every size, including startups, enterprises, and public sector organizations. On the AWS Partner Network side, it includes thousands of system integrators who specialize in AWS services. It also includes tens of thousands of ISVs who adapt their te technology to work on AWS. With AWS, you can leverage the new technologies to experiment and innovate more quickly. We are continually accelerating our pace of innovation. For example, in 2014, AWS pioneered the serverless computing space with AWS Lambda. Another example is with Amazon SageMaker. It's a fully managed machine learning service that facilitates using machine learning without any previous experience. Another topic which is important to our enterprise and mainframe customers is our operational expertise. And in this space, AWS has unmatched experience, reliability, security, and performance. Customers use AWS for business critical workloads, and AWS has been delivering cloud services for over 14 years. So AWS has the most operational experience at greater scale of any cloud provider. From an infrastructure perspective, AWS has the most extensive global cloud infrastructure. No other cloud provider offers as many regions with multiple availability zones. We have 77 availability zones within 24 geographic regions around the world, and we have plans to add nine more availability zones and three more AWS regions. And so these are important factors when choosing the right platform for mainframe data and innovation around it. Now we'll see how our customers leverage Click Replicate to create business value, and we'll look into more specific use cases for that. So you can move to the next slide, Adam. Thank you. So the first use case I want to talk about is about augmenting mainframes with agile data analytics services on AWS. Mainframe data can include decades of historical business transactions for massive amounts of users. So it's a strong business advantage that customers want to benefit from. So we see customers use big data analytics to unleash mainframe data business value. And we provide services for the full data lifecycle from ingestion to processing, storage, analysis, visualization, and automation. This use case you see here is also applicable to infrastructure operational analytics. Mainframes are expensive and complex, so customers constantly have to optimize and tune their mainframes to reduce their CPU or image consumption. And they want to do this while still meeting the performance objective. So mainframe system management metrics, such as the SMF data, can be replicated over to AWS, and then it can be analyzed, virtualized, we can create some alerts, and we can actually do some mainframe tuning just by analyzing this data. So in this use case, you can see that Click Replicate copies mainframe data in real time from either relational, hierarchical, or mainframe file-based data stores. And it copies that data over to AWS data lakes, data warehouse, or data stores. So on the AWS side, customers can choose Amazon S3 for their data lake, for example. They can also choose Amazon Redshift for their data warehouse, or they can choose Amazon RDS or Aurora for their managed relational databases. AWS also offers choice for data processing and analysis. For example, we can use Amazon EMR, which is a managed Hadoop framework. We can use Amazon SageMaker for the machine learning models, or we can use Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for streaming data analysis. For visualization and business intelligence, customers can use Amazon QuickSight. Now, going beyond analytics only, some customers want to use mainframe data for more advanced purposes. So let's see this in our next use case. This use case is about augmenting the mainframe with capabilities relying on data replicated to AWS. Because mainframe development cycles with legacy languages are slow and rigid, customers use AWS to build new services quickly. These new services access real-time mainframe data in the local AWS data store. So you can see this is a variation from the previous use case. So local mainframe data is not used for data, for data analytics here, but it's used for new communication channels or for new functionalities for the end users. The new AWS functions augment the mainframe application. For example, we see customers that are creating new channels for mobile or voice-based applications, and they can also develop innovations based on microservices or machine learning. 
So in this architecture, you can see that click replicate copies mainframe data in real time to the AWS managed relational data store, and it shows Amazon Aurora or Amazon RDS. But we can also stream and process the data via Amazon Kinesis. And we use AWS local data source because oftentimes we have this as a strong requirement to avoid latency issues. It's also needed to use a local data store to avoid increasing the mainframe expensive MIPS consumption. Once the mainframe data is in a local AWS data store, then we can create the services quickly on top of it. For example, a new mobile application or voice interface can be added using Amazon API Gateway or using Amazon Lex or using Amazon Alexa skills. As far as the business logic is concerned, it can reside in microservices, which can be hosted in AWS Lambda or in containers within Amazon ECS. Then some innovative services can also benefit from the Amazon Machine Learning Service. Now, because data is duplicated between the mainframe and AWS data stores, the data architect that's building this solution needs to be careful about potential data consistency or integrity concerns. So some solutions for this can be to use read-only and read-write patterns, or some customers actually choose to use some consistency checks and remediations. We talked about mainframe MIPS, which are expensive, while some customers really focus on reducing costs by reducing their MIPS consumption. And they do this by offloading some processing to AWS. So let's see this in the next use case. Each MIPS on the mainframe can easily cost several thousand dollars every year. We see customers with annual mainframe costs in the tens of millions of dollars and sometimes in the hundreds of millions of dollars per year. So some customers decide to reduce mainframe costs by migrating or floating very specific workloads to AWS. This use case is not migrating to complete mainframes, but executing pinpoint transactions in parallel on AWS. And in this case, click replicate facilitates the data movements in between. Because of data replication, consistency, and latency constraints, this use case does not fit all mainframe workloads. Actually, it's only specific mainframe data workloads that are better suited for offload. We already mentioned data analytics workloads, but we can add to that other workloads that can be good examples of offloading. We can offload some mainframe backdrops that create reports, archive data, or transmit files to partners. We can also offload specific functions or data access types, such as read-only transactions. In this example, we can have a customer that can choose, for example, to keep the read-write transactions on the mainframe while offloading the read-only transactions on the AWS side. On the data side, Click Replicate takes care of the data movement between the mainframe and AWS. And on the application logic side, the specific functions, the functional behavior, is reproduced using various strategies. So there are different strategies available for that. And depending on the number of lines of code, depending on the time frame, on the target technology, we would pick one strategy or another. In this architecture, click replicate copies mainframe data in real time to the proper AWS data store. So if it's relational data, it fits easily in Aurora or RDS. For mainframe hierarchical or legacy data files, such as index file, then the data is converted via, via click replicate to the proper AWS data source. For the specific offloaded function logic, AWS provides choice of compute services. So those, that logic can be deployed on Amazon EC2 or can be deployed on container services or even on serverless compute such as AWS Lambda. Now, as soon as critical business transactions are offloaded or migrated to AWS, the quality of service becomes very important. So Adam, you can move to the next slide now. Thank you. So it's actually a customer frequently asked questions. What about the quality of service for my enterprise data and applications? Mainframe systems often have stringent non-functional requirements. So when modernizing to AWS, we make sure that we meet or we exceed these requirements. And AWS offers numerous capabilities to execute securely and reliably enterprise applications. I'll start by mentioning the AWS Well-Architected Framework. It's a framework that's been developed to help cloud architects build secure, high-performing, and resilient infrastructure for their applications. It's based on five pillars, operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization. So this well-architected framework provides a consistent approach for customers and partners to evaluate their architectures. This way, they can implement designs that will scale over time. That means for most quality of service requirements or non-functional requirements, 
we have AWS services, features, or capabilities which can satisfy them. Let's look at security, for example. Cloud security is uh, AWS' highest priority, so we've built strong safeguards to help protect customer privacy. AWS is architected to be the most flexible and secure cloud computing environment. Our core infrastructure is built to satisfy the security requirements for the military, for global banks, and other high-sensitivity organizations. So that security is supported by 230 AWS security services and features. You can see here on this slide some of the services and features that we have for encryption, confidentiality, identity and access management, key management, auditing, etc. Now, on the high availability side, which is a common requirement coming from, from mainframes, we use a model that's based on AWS regions and availability zone. This model has been actually recognized by Gartner as a recommended approach for running enterprise applications that require high availability. It provides regional redundancy with availability zones in separate isolated locations. And actually, some AWS services have out-of-the-box features to easily deploy in a cross-AZ or multi-AZ topology. AWS infrastructure also provides for global redundancy, and we use AWS regions for that, that are in separate geographic areas. Regarding the scalability topic, we can do both vertical and horizontal scalability. We even take it one level further with elasticity. And with elasticity, resources are dynamically adjusted to the load. So the other advantage of this elasticity is that it helps reducing the blast radius because we have a higher number of small processing instances. It also helps reducing the cost because on a pay-as-you-go basis, you only pay for the number of instances that are strictly necessary for the current load. For system management, there is a large choice of services available. So you can see we have centralized monitoring, centralized log management, centralized backup, system automation, and many more services. We also provide many services and features that are designed to help control and reduce costs. So you can see here some key features such as cost explorer or optimized pricing. Now, the last topic I want to talk about on this slide is the agility aspect. That's a very important aspect for businesses. And we can increase the agility of workloads on AWS on many dimensions. It starts with infrastructure automation, for example, with infrastructure as code. It continues with agile application DevOps, relying on AWS code services. For example, we can create CI/CD pipelines with code commit, code build, code pipeline, code deployed. And then we reinforce the agility also with the largest choice of services available at your fingertips for building new innovations. So all these capabilities help meeting or exceeding mainframe workloads requirements. This being said, I'll now transition over to Adam for him to share about custom examples. You're on mute, Adam. We don't hear you, Adam, yet. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we hey. can. Yeah. Excellent. I kept getting double muted on my little speakerphone thing. Like <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I'm just kicking in your toe, so. Thank you very much for that. There's uh, some really um, you know, great in-depth insights there from the AWS platform. So yeah, we'll talk about uh, a customer example. Um, but first, I just want to um, unpack a little bit of the, the product you were talking about there, the, the Click Replicate. So this is part of the data integration platform and the part that we call um, CDC streaming um, in terms of um, this kind of replicate uh, architecture. We'll just have a, a high level view of this. So typically it's installed as kind of like a middle tier server. And on the diagram here, you can see the data sources on the left. Um, side, uh, they could be on-prem and in the in the cloud, and we have that wide range of endpoints that that we support. Do you remember the the list I talked about earlier? So legacy systems, you know, including the mainframe, relational databases, warehouses, lakes, and flat files, um, and we allow you to capture data from those sources and automatically apply lightweight transformations and filtering um, as the data goes in flight before we propagate the data to those wide range of targets depicted on the right side, um, which again can be, as well as being on the AWS cloud, can be on-prem uh, as well, um, and open it up to lots of different formats uh, and conversion into like streaming messaging platforms like Kinesis 
uh, and the other examples that, that Phil sort of just walked you through. So with the click replicate product, you can seamlessly replicate data from that full load and, and, and manages those batches. Uh, and it will automatically um, switch to uh, capturing and replicating just the changes in the data as and when they occur at the source. Uh, and we do that through log-based change data capture. So we apply the transformations as much as we can in memory um, and provide filtering capabilities on the data as well. So an example is um, if you were, you know, wanted to, to bring in 10 years worth of data, but you wanted to actually filter that down to a single year for the most recent transactions or multiple regions, uh, those kind of things. Uh, and this can really help to improve the speed and also be used as a, as a security part as well. For example, by filtering out um, and, and help to ob obfuscate sensitive data such as PII during the, that transformation process. Uh, and just as a, a point of note, additional transformations can be applied by utilizing the rest of the Click Data Integration Platform further upstream, such as the task of automating the creation of those data marks and warehousing and lakes uh, by taking advantage of the other product lines that we have uh, called Click Compose and Click Catalog that, that make up the, the data integration platform. So with Replicate, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the data flows that can be configured, um, such as replicating data from one source and then fanning out to, to many targets, uh, as in the case of the customer example we we're just about to talk about. Uh, and that can be vice versa as well. And even sort of migrating data from multiple disparate systems scattered about the place out into the cloud into one or, or more sources. And you may notice that we've got the persistent store there at the bottom. Uh, and key points to make here is we don't use this to store the data that's being replicated across. This is used to store out the configuration and the state um, of the replication task. So for every replication source and target that's configured inside uh, Click Replicate, it's configured as a single task. And it's this configuration that, that we saw in terms of the type of metadata and the fields and tables that have been selected, as well as the transformations that are required as well. Um, and the state that we store is, is basically the last replicate uh, task um, in terms of, you know, from a, a source or target um, state. So that's so we can pick up where we left off in case of any interruptions, whether they're errors or actual manual pauses in, in the replication task. So think of that as kind of like a bookmark kind of functionality. So the key thing here is all of this can be done at scale, um, and we have many customers with uh, running hundreds of tasks in their production systems. So when it comes to the tasks themselves, just want to take a, another quick look at a, a kind of high level uh, logical overview here of how, uh, the tasks themselves. So again, on the left hand side, we've got the source databases and the targets on, on the right. And if you look at the kind of the top layer of that diagram, this is where we're kind of showing that batch data flow. So the batch transfers about taking snapshots from the tables um, or the table, sorry, from the source database. And that can be um, you know, all of those tables or a selection of as you choose, that's all configurable. And then for all of the sources that we uh, support, we've done a lot of work in the back end to optimize the unloading of these um, and the transformation and filters uh, occurs as we previously mentioned, just talked about. And then that prepared data is landed in the target source of choice. Again, well, we've done a lot of work in the back end um, using Pacific Loaders to optimize uh, and ensure that the data is landed correctly and in the proper format for the target. So, you know, converting sort of um, you know, typical relational database into uh, streaming messages, uh, for example. Uh, so if you just switch your attention to the bottom part of the diagram, again, going from left and right, this is describing the, the CDC data flow. So we use the transaction logs to read in the changes at the metadata layer and then apply the same transformations as before and then you know, batch optimize into a streaming uh, data pipeline. So key thing here is that all the tasks are working seamlessly in the background once they're set up, and we automatically uh, sync the data for you so you don't have to do this manually. So key takeaways here in terms of um, you know, replicate and, and how it works and, and can help you is the configurations of tasks is all handled by a very uh, simple drag and drop user interface, but there's a lot of uh, complex work in the background that helps take the heavy lifting out of those time-consuming scripting tasks and processes you would normally have to do traditionally in the old world. 
And that allows you to free up, as a, particularly as a data architect or a data engineer, frees up a lot of your time so then you can focus on those higher business value projects. Um, Click Replicate also automatically manages the full load and, and change data capture for you. And then from a designer perspective, um, while the endpoints may look the same as, as you're configuring them, um, there's, like I said, a lot of optimization work has really gone into all of the endpoints that we support, both source and target, to ensure that the data is unloaded efficiently at source and optimized and transformed correctly for whatever your chosen target is. So, on to the custom example, someone who's really taken advantage of that uh, and pretty much use case two and three that Phil described there is Vanguard. Now, Vanguard are an investment company. They manage well over $5 trillion of assets with more than 30 million uh, investors. And part of their challenge is that they wanted to um, you know, leverage the AWS platform to build out new applications uh, and build out a new cloud platform built on AWS, taking advantage of microservices architectures and deliver the analytical solutions that their businesses really need to have much more better, uh, efficient and real-time access to the data that was coming from the large mainframe systems uh, and the data sources that they had there. Typically, it was, it was DB2 running on, on ZOS. So the solution they had and, and had set up is the um, being able to replicate their mainframe data in that near real-time capability directly into the, the AWS um, cloud platform. And then they were making it available then to not only their application developers so they could build out these microservices um, and then deliver that out to the rest of their analytical users as well. And it really helped them to offload uh, the queries um, 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 at the source mainframe and really help to reduce the costs. And Click uh, Replicate was selected by Vanguard because of its change data capture technology and the ability to do that kind of fanning out um, basis from the one to, to many sources as a quite a popular use case. So the result there is that by utilizing the CDC streaming part of the data integration platform, um, it helps to manage Vanguard's really diverse workloads as Phil described, and the huge data volumes that they're dealing with. Typically, on average, on an hourly basis, we're helping to move over 20 million rows of data, and at peak times, that's in excess of 60 million rows of data on an hourly basis. And for all of this, by delivering a you know, much better and efficient uh, kind of pipeline, Vanguard's adoption of the cloud data platform that they built using these microservices has increased 200% year on year and, and growing. And also, uh, taking advantage of the AWS platform, they've managed to reduce their build and compute costs quite significantly by about 30%. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time to really unpack this in, in, in more detail, but there's some really great videos available online where Vanguard uh, were um, presented at the AWS reInvent um, uh, keynote last year. Uh, and we'll send you the links to these videos um, after this webinar, but there's a section there, there's a great eight minute overview of Jeff Dowds, who's the IT executive at Gamp Vanguard, and you can see him there with the, the kind of punchline slide on the benefits that they, uh, they've achieved. And it's a brilliant, really great 20 minute technical deep dive session um, from Donovan Stockton, um, who is the platform owner and cloud data as a service owner at Vanguard. So it's a great example and I encourage you to, to take some time out to, to watch those videos when you get the links. Uh, so Vanguard is one of many customers taking advantage of um, real time replication from their mainframe data sources. Uh, and the Click QDI platform is really here to help you um, make the best of that. So it allows you to safely extract the mainframe data for external analytics, flexibly integrating with any major analytics platform or BI tool of choice. We do that through efficient log-based uh, CDC without impacting uh, production uh, performance uh, at the sources, and it ensures that your analytics targets always stay current with the very latest data schema and meta updates in real time. So this all helps to improve the efficiency and reduce your costs through automated creation and updates of those with those analytics ready data sets. Um, real time CDC really helps to eliminate the, the need for the you know, constant full no loads and helps to reduce those costly MIPS consumption costs. Um, 
and really allows you to execute your data and analytics projects and initiatives um, you know, on cross hybrid clouds for more rapidly um, uh, faster ROI. And this is all underpinned by that unil in, in universal integration uh, with all your key mainframe sources and other heterogeneous endpoints to really allow you to replicate your mainframe data out into the AWS cloud, trust your mainframe with Click and AWS exactly like Vanguard and many other customers do. So that just leaves me to, to kind of wrap it up there. If you'd like to learn more, um, please visit uh, click.com. You can read more about the data integration platform itself. Um, we're proud to be an advanced technology partner within the AWS partner network. And we also have a dedicated page on this. And I've got the link there for you so, so you can read more about the partnership. And you can even sign up for a free trial and take Click Replicate uh, for a test drive yourself and see how easy it is to manage your um, uh, data sources and deliver those real-time data streaming um, pipelines. So I'll leave it there. Um, there's some useful links here on, on the screen to the, the website, but also the ability to contact Click uh, if you need to. Um, and there's a, also a dedicated uh, mainframe address for Amazon, mainframe at amazon.com. Um, please get in touch. We'd love to talk to you and, and uh, see how we can help you become even uh, better than you already are and hear about your, your use cases. So I'll leave it there and open it up to any questions if there are any. Adam and Phil, thank you so much for this fantastic presentation. And just to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email to all registrants by end of day Thursday for this webinar with links to the slides and the recording and anything else requested throughout. I'll make sure and get that um, contact info out and into the email as well. Um, so, and if you have questions for Phil or Adam, please submit them in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen in the Q&A section. So diving in here, how does data quality work with the data going from um, the heterogeneous sources to the platform? Okay, uh, so yes, yeah, so from a, from a click uh, perspective, there's a couple of things we can do. So you've got the the transformation processes as in terms of uh, data type um, conversions um, in, in, that you can use as, as a bit of uh, data quality. Um, depending on what's meant by data quality. Uh, we can do things like um, with a mainframe uh, copybook, uh, we can take the um, numerical uh, kind of field that's uh, representing a date from, an, say, an IMS data source, and then we can allow you to transform that to a true uh, date, uh, data type field through Replicate. Um, so therefore, it can um, allow you to, to more easily manage uh, your data sources once it's um, copied out and replicated out in the cloud and, and, and become more efficient um, that way. Uh, another part that we can help with data quality is I mentioned the, uh, the, the catalog uh, functionality. So this um, has some form of uh, data prep in terms of the onboarding process, um, and we have integration in with the, uh, the data integration platform um, and has some uh, capacity to improve or uh, master data quality as well. So particularly around data governance, um, who's got access to the data, what type of data needs to be seen by the right people. Um, those kind of stuff can also be um, covered by the catalog as part of that onboarding process as you make, once you've moved the data into AWS and, and you wanna make that more available to the organization in, uh, you know, so as well as you know, improving the quality of the data to, to, to fix our errors and clean it up and normalize it a little bit. Um, and then push it out to the uh, rest of the organization so they can find that um, and, uh, and, and use it as in you know, analytics business ready form. And so anything you want to add to that from an AWS perspective? Um, what I'll add is that it also depends on the on the use cases that we're dealing with. Uh, if we're talking about an offload use case, for example, then we would pay attention to have strict functional equivalence between uh, source and target, and we would actually uh, check the data quality going through the functions themselves by doing some uh, consistent functional equivalence testing across the two platforms. Now, if we're dealing with uh, new innovations, new use cases, etc., then uh, I would say the data format, the data um, organization, etc., can be quite different from the mainframe side itself. So that's where it becomes more tricky to actually check the source and target and do some, some equivalent testing. Now, I would think that uh, 
the uh, click replicate product itself can actually do some checksums on the on the data so that it makes sure that it's actually in a in a, in a proper uh, consistent format uh, while it's traveling across the, the network flows and making sure that the data is still uh, the proper data when it arrives in the target data store. Yes, yeah, that's, that's definitely handled through uh, the configuration side of things. So you decide, and I like that example I was trying to sort of articulate around the the, the date field um, and, and then transferring that, transforming that into a proper date uh, field once it lands in, into your target, for sure. Perfect. And for best practices, does um, one need to install Click in in-house environment, or should it only be in AWS? And want to know a bit on connecting to mainframe and transferring data to AWS. Yeah. So from the the, the first part, connecting to to the mainframe. So the way um, Click Replicate uh, works in in the most part, um, we. Uh, we, we talk about agentless uh, and minimal impact on the uh, on the mainframe, um, but there is some configuration on the mainframe. We try to keep that as as uh, you know, lightweight uh, as possible. We have a team of expertise to help you do that. Um, but it gets as close to you know if you can install it as close to the the, the source uh, database as, as possible, then we can help lift that from that kind of on-prem in in-house environment. Um, and then push that out um, into uh, any target of choice. So like I said, it could go from on-prem to on-prem. You, you can go in through several hops before it goes out into the into the cloud. Yeah, what, what I would add to this is that there is certainly value in having it running on, a, on the AWS side, and, and, and there are some services that are built and readily available so that we can handle the failover uh, nicely across the really zones. And for example, uh, we could use uh, EFS uh, shared file systems, or we could use uh, Amazon FSx for Lustre, so that the failover can happen seamlessly and uh, and have a active passive setup and have the passive becomes uh, active uh, seamlessly to the um, uh, for the, keeping the data replication going and, and flowing between the source and the target. So um, indeed, I mean it, it can be done either on prem or on AWS. Actually, maybe the final decision would be more geared towards where the sources and targets are. But uh, if there is a AWS target, there is certainly some value in, in making it uh, across uh, EC2 and across availability zones because it makes it very manageable. Definitely. And, and just, to, just to build on that as well, Phil, I mean, um, we do have, it really does depend on, on the volume um, uh, the data that you've got to kind of move and replicate. We do have uh, customers running replicate purely in, in a cloud in, in environment and then extracting from on-prem sources. But uh, I guess it, it is use case dependent and uh, volume dependent as well what works best for that environment and that customer. And our attendees are being a little quiet today. If you guys have questions, feel free to submit them in the bottom right-hand corner. In the q and I'll give you a couple of minutes to add uh, something in there. Um, so Phil and Adam, you know, anything that you haven't addressed in terms of what the most common issue is and, and where you see the biggest relief from your from your customers? I think from, um, from the uh, click side, it's about the um, ability to, to work with you know, that wide breadth of, of data sources, those heterogeneous sources. Uh, so it's typically not just um, uh, you know, the mainframe uh, data that they, they have challenges in, in getting um, you know, kind of data delivery piece in. So we can help them with that, that wide uh, piece there. Um, and the ability to, to do that um, you know, with kind of uh, minimal impact. Um, and real flexibility in terms of uh, the, the, the kind of tasks and configurations that you want to set up um, uh, that, you know, so you can deliver those kind of one-to-many um, uh, setups and, and vice versa. So it's, it's that flexibility for both on-prem um, and, and cloud environments, that real sort of hybrid use case as we, we started off with. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Phil? Yeah, I mean, from a, a customer perspective, I mean, we know sometimes it's very difficult for customers to get access to the mainframe data sets, uh, especially if it's DB2 on Z, I mean, there are ways of doing it, but it's not as straightforward. But if it's VSAM, it's actually even more difficult. And so by virtue of having a Trinity deployed, uh, a Trinity click replicate, uh, it actually goes much faster because you, you install the, the, the product, you start having data flowing and streaming, and that can happen in a matter of, of days or possibly weeks maximum. 
and then as soon as the data is flowing over to an AWS data source, then you have broad access to the data. And that's where the innovation comes in and kicks in because then all sorts of different use cases are now readily available for customers to use. And it, it's not just a one line of business that may, may benefit from it, but then you can open it actually the data to, to lots of different lines of businesses. And if I go back to the, to the Vanguard example, one way that they've been able to leverage the, the data also is by pushing it across regions so that uh, the data has close proximity to their users so that they can improve performance and so that they can even re offload some of the, of the load from, from the mainframe and from the infrastructure for the more. So as soon as the data becomes available, it's really unleashing that data from the mainframe to, to AWS and then all sorts of new use cases. The users will come up with the use cases that are most pertinent for their business. Definitely, yeah, really does spurn innovation across the, across the business. And we have a question here requesting some documentation and, and uh, for Click um, to do a, a bigger deep dive, and we'll definitely work to get that to you. Um, uh, we will have lots of information there. And, you know, Adam, we get a lot of questions. You know, I see that you specialize in, you know, GDPR. You know, can you talk a little bit in, in how this, um, you know, it, I know a lot of companies are still struggling with, um, uh, with implementation to in compliance and what we should, you know, uh, across the world, you know, how, how is Click helping with and, and AWS helping um, in the governance of, of compliance? Yeah, I mean, compliance is, uh, and, and governance is, is quite a strong thing. So we, um, from the replicate perspective, it's generally installed within the kind of um, you know, hardening in environment there. But we do have um, you know, features across the board, um, across the platform that do help with governance. So their accessibility is, is, uh, is one thing. So um, kind of like the, the next stage is, is the catalog um, uh, product that, that I mentioned. So that allows, um, we talk about um, uh, the, the kind of democratization of data and allow a greater and, and more access across the organization. We need to do that in secure and governed ways to make sure that only the right people get access to the right data. So this, um, you know, we, we can integrate in with uh, IDP and um, uh, access groups that are, that are already um, set up, or you, you can uh, create them from scratch if you have to. Um, but that can help as, as one part of the, the, the governance. Inside uh, the catalog it itself, um, we have some uh, useful features, particularly around data stewards. So it's not only about ensuring that the, the kind of quality of the data once you're um, bringing it, uh, onboarding it in. Um, you can then choose to, you know, I mentioned about obfuscating fields. We've got an element of that in the, the, the kind of lightweight transformations from Replicate, but you can extend that out further in Replicate and really start to target and identify fields that will contain your most um, sensitive information uh, to make sure that's handled correctly and only the right people uh, can kind of get access to it. Um, so it speeds up uh, ease of use of, you know, knowing that you, you kind of using your data in a governed way um, and, and people can use it safely without exposing uh, any sensitive data, you know, whether that's just a simple um, uh, kind of name and address or credit card details, social security numbers, or, or sensitive, uh, more sensitive records than that. So you can manage it, um, there's controls in there uh, to, to manage it uh, at a governance level. And even if you push that all the way through from the data analytics side, I touch loosely that we also have a data analytics um, uh, platform. Um, and that really has some really strong uh, governance controls in there to particularly around when you start bringing in self-service, that could be another uh, nightmare. It's valuable to the business, but if you don't do it with the, the right controls, um, and also without stifling um, usability as well, the data analytics platform really gets that balance between um, delivering that, uh, the security and flexibility that IT needs, but the agility that the, the business needs as well. So we can um, carry on that, that kind of um, access control pretty much down to, to row level and control who's, uh, you can actually set up who, who kind of uh, gets access to, to what um, analytics dashboard um, uh, down to, to kind of row level in, in, in some cases as well. So data governance can, you know, pushed all the way through that. Um, you know, the other challenge that organizations have is that, you know, GDPR is one key thing, but there are different um, uh, sort of rules and regulations that, across the world, but, um, um, using those kind of governance um, and controls that you have in place can help you, you know, build out your, your governance strategies 
um, and keep your organization um, you know, safe and secure as well. So we, we don't push our products as, as you know, GDPR compliant, but we can help you um, in your uh, compliance strategies as well in, in quite as many different use cases. Um, the analytics side is quite interesting because then you can start, like Bill was saying, once you get the data out and kind of free it, um, but you know, in, in terms of making it more, more accessible and do more things with it, um, you can start to uh, analyze the data and sit and start seeing you know, how old your, the data is, who's got access to it, who's doing what with it, um, uh, and, and those kind of things, and make sure that you know, you're compliant so you don't keep data for too long. That's one thing. It's not just about data breaches. It's about um, you know, how you're using the data and, and how long you're keeping it for. Uh, it's another interesting use case I came across recently. And yeah, the analytics side can really help you on that as well. Sorry, that was a very long so, answer. No, it's very good. It, it's a very important uh, question and answer. So, uh, Phil, anything you want to add to that? Oh, Adam did a great response for it. Thank you. And I mean, the only thing I would say is that as far as compliance is concerned, on the AWS side, we have lots of guidance that's available. We have services that are uh, compliance specific, and we have a list of services that are compliant for each of the uh, regulations. So uh, we can definitely assist with that. So if there are specific questions for specific service or specific use cases, we'll be glad to help. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Adam, this question is for you. Uh, how differently does the Trinity work after being a part of Click? Were there enhancements made in the last six to eight months in that? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So obviously, uh, Attunity was uh, acquired uh, by Click um, a couple of years ago now, almost two, almost two years ago, uh, and it's really brought about that full data integration platform. So we've integrated in with um, other products from previous acquisitions. Podium um, delivered the the catalog, um, and it's about um, trying to you know or, or bring those product sets closer together. Um, making it more uh, kind of cohesive under under one roof. So that's a development um, side going on as well. Um, and it's also uh, kind of um, bridged together the full end-to-end -end platform now. So really with our only vendor that can give that full end-to-end -end, um, kind of solution from taking your raw data, turning that into analytics-ready data, um, and then um, you know finding the insights, analyzing it, and finding those actual insights uh, quicker than uh, than you could do before. So it's it's brought that all together. We've kept you know one differentiator is that we've kept the kind of um, uh, we've always been data agnostic in terms of the wide breadth of data sources that that we use. Um, but the it, the data integration side of things is also uh, BI tool agnostic. Um, so we've kept that uh, as well because that's important. We know that you know, there's more than one uh, analytics tool. Um, so we are a data company now. We're not just a, a data analytics company, as it was sort of could have been seen a couple of years ago. Um, but in terms of the 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 opportunity side, it's really strengthening that data integration story uh, and, and bringing in developing it further, bringing in more um, endpoints, um, and also joining up that um, uh, end to end um, story. And the key thing is we we kept. The, yeah, the real core of, of any product is the, the you know the R and T team, the R and D team behind it, um, and we've you know we, we've kept that entire team and a lot of highly skilled um, you know operational and, and sales and uh, marketing uh, teams as well, and that's all been integrated into Click. So one you know one company, one team, uh, one family, and we believe we can add value to our customers at whatever stage in the data journey that they, you know, they want to add value to. Perfect. I love it. Well, that does bring us very close to the top of the hour here. I just want to say thank you both, uh, Adam and Phil, for this great presentation again. Uh, and thanks to Click for sponsoring today's webinar. Again, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Thursday to all registrants with links to the slides and links to the recording of this session, uh, as um, along with the links here at communication. And we'll get that link out to you with the um, links to deep dive into uh, Click further. So. Um, Again, hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much. Thanks all of our attendees for attending. Hope you enjoy and stay safe out there. Adam and Phil, thanks so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you, Phil. Thank you, Shannon. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.